Hello, this is Russell Thomas, KV4S, Kilo Victor 4 Sierra. I'm going to give you a quick overview of uh, setting up a uh, DV switch server. And that server can be a Raspberry Pi or an Ubuntu cloud server or an Ubuntu computer. And uh, it's fairly straightforward in the same instructions go for for either version with some slight modifications and when I say that I mean I simply change one of the extensions from ARM HF to AMD 64 and then the instructions pretty much go on like you like they say so the um, basically the first step is you get a clean image set up whether that be for Raspberry Pi or an Ubuntu computer like we stated earlier and uh, really great instructions are here on the DV switch groups IO page and I've hot linked it here in my article and uh, when you first log in you just run the sudo s command to put you in sudo mode so you don't have to type that over and over install DV switch uh, there are several versions of well I wouldn't say several versions but there's several different ways you can use DV switch uh, most of my previous experiences is, is uh, setting up a single bridge node between all-star and uh, DMR uh, and some of the other digital modes uh, DMR to YSF etc but this particular set of instructions uh, sets up some scripts further down in the instructions so uh, you can uh, change talk groups on the fly whereas my previous instructions was like uh, setting up a one-to-one -one node to DMR group or something like that so these are pretty straightforward you get the re repo the repo rep repository I guess is what they call it so they call it repo here you change it chmod x basically says this is an executable when you set that you can then install the repro you can get the update use this command to actually install the, the applications and uh, at this point is a little bit different from a traditional DV switch install you're going to override overwrite the uh, MMDVM bridge executable and the analog bridge executable and uh, like I said this is where you'll change the extension based off of which uh, platform you're installing on uh, here's the here's some more of the new stuff you're also going to get these extra INI files this will set up the configurations for the different modes and uh, what uh, ports that they transmit and receive on so when you're changing them on the fly uh, I'm thinking it's going in and reading from this IMI INI and replacing the values over here in the analog bridge INI and then the, this bridge script is what does most of the heavy lifting it also there's some steps in here it downloads some additional scripts for the tuning um, and the analog bridge restart is what that stands for once you download those you're going to make, some, make them executables so they run and uh, at that point you go in and make these modifications to the MMDVM bridge you change your call sign you put in a unique DMR ID plus two digits so you could potentially stand up multiple ones of these I'm not sure if you have the need for that but maybe some clubs would uh, you zero out nine digit zeros these can be anything you want and um, you scroll down a little bit and uh, you enable your DMR mode. I'm just covering DMR, but you can obviously you can uh, enable all the digital modes. Uh, D Star is a little bit different. You may need a um, a thumb DV plugged into the device, so that may rule out cloud if you're wanting to do D Star. But um, it's uh, it will work. I've seen people talk about it working for them. And like I said, I primarily use DMR, so that's really all I'm going to cover. Uh, when you scroll down a little bit further, you set up the DMR network. And uh, really all you need to do is change it to enabled and put in uh, 3101.repeater.net or 
303, 302, 308, that's your four US servers. Uh, if you use a different server, you can of course put that in. If you're on TGIF or another network, you would replace the uh, address and, the po and possibly change the password as needed. Uh, no trick there. You'll come down into your analog bridge. Uh, be sure that you change out this exactly. It's reversed in the original download and the RX and TX are lowercase so I've just typed over it completely RX port with the RXP capitalized just like they've got here I did have some initial issues with that where audio wasn't moving over and I realized that it, I guess it was case sensitive and I had to reverse the order but um, anyway that's pretty straightforward same deal with your DMR ID your gateway and repeater ID cannot be the same it will give you an error if you start the uh, analog bridge with those being the, the same and you may not see that unless you're in the logs looking at it so use a seven digit DMR ID and then the repeater ID is the same with the two digit number that needs to match between your analog bridge and your MMDVM and um, this may not play well on the other networks um, I believe this the two digit does work on TJF but I'm not sure about others uh, this is the important part for USRP and making it work with the DV switch mobile application uh, it says replace one two three four five but mine did not mine had a different value but I knew which one they were talking about so it's the TXRX port you're going to put your 50111 in there and I would suggest just, just sticking with that unless you're setting up multiples and you want to have different port numbers like it says here it, it suggests any of these I just picked the one from the instructions and it worked fine for me when you go into the INIs like the DMR INI you need to replace the ambi audio section all you need to change is the gateway and repeater ID but don't forget, like I did, and miss the US, uh, USRP settings down below, which is what is right here, 50111. Uh, like I said, I think it's doing a replace when it uh, reboots, so um, it uses those keys to know which values to change. You update your analog bridge script that you downloaded previously. All you got to do is change the port number to what you used, and then save it and uh, it should already be an executable at that point and then you sh restart your server there are ways to open your log files I'm not going to really cover that but uh, this sh if you follow this to the T you shouldn't shouldn't have any problems uh, that logs are located in VAR V -A -R, user I believe and uh, this part will cover the DV switch mobile application itself and uh, all you are really doing is just saying this is a USRP connection your server name your port of course you've got to open this up on your router and it talks about that here put in your call sign and the DMR ID you're going to use I did a little bit of testing this doesn't have to be the same one you used in the server setup so it could potentially allow you to use you and a few friends could share one of course you couldn't use them at the same time but um, if you uh, have two multiple DMR IDs which I kinda recommend you do if you're doing stuff like this I typically have one that I use for when I'm transmitting and then one I use for bridges so I actually apply for two different DMR IDs and do stuff like that it's not required but uh, that's what I do uh, when you're in the application instead of showing you the rest of the screenshots I'm going to switch over to the to the phone and watch and let you watch a real real-time view of it and I'll be back shortly KV4S so at this point we're going to assume that the uh, account is set up for US RP like the uh, screenshot showed in the previous video uh, you can do your mode select here depending on what you configured like I said I just did DMR but you can see that they support all of the digital modes you can also select talk groups 
and uh, this provides a really long list. A lot of the stuff I use is in the middle, so it takes quite a bit of scrolling to get there. Uh, good news is you can use the keypad and type in your own talk group numbers. And um, I like to use a kind of a test one, but uh, some of the guys around here keep up with me on it. Uh, 240, 218. And uh, when you hit send, it will trigger a key up. So it's uh, like a dynamic hotspot where you've got to activate the talk group before you can hear hear any traffic or transmit. And uh, I will key up the radio. Unfortunately, the audio did not come through on this uh, recording, so I'm having to talk over it. There's the radio keying up. And uh, that would have been my call sign you heard. This is me keying up from the DV Switch mobile app. The radio did key up, so I could could have had a could have talked to myself. <laughs> and um, so the transmissions do go both ways. It uh, so far all my testing has worked pretty good. I just set this up today. Uh, there's a 4,000 disconnect. You do need to disconnect your talk groups before you move on to another one, so you don't have any overlaps there. And uh, when it like you just saw it uh, come back 4000 you also hear the audio disconnected uh, like you would if you were on the open spot or uh, uh, Pi Star based hotspot so I uh, did try the Alabama link to show that it is dynamic it is connected the key up did happen uh, there was no one talking when I connected it must have been a quiet day but I do frequent Alabama link a good bit so if you ever hear, hear me on say hello and then I'll 4000 disconnect here. So that's pretty much it. It's uh, really easy to set up a DV switch server and you'll use the DV switch mobile application to control that hotspot and uh, it is Android based and um, um, it runs in the background so if you're used to using Blue DV for this type of uh, phone communications with digital uh, that will disconnect if you turn the screen off or um, or uh, move the app out of the foreground. Uh, this does not work that way. It works like you kind of like you expect it to. It's going to run in the background, and if you turn the screen off, you can still hear. So it's a, it's a pretty nice uh, alternative if you don't have your HT handy. 73 and like I said uh, look me up on QRZ if you have trouble setting this up yourself or have additional questions 73 and uh, you can look up my uh, amateur radio connect information on kv4s.link kilo victor 4 sierra dot link l-i-n-k All right, I wanted to show a real video versus the other one that got the audio cut off. So here we go again. Going to launch DV Switch Mobile on the phone. It's in DMR mode. I'm going to type in a talk group. Hitting send. Kicked off the... Um, dynamic push to talk so it activated the talk group on the hotspot KV4S testing I've had this audio echo thing going on I think it's because it's well it's because I'm sitting right beside it that's probably what it is KV4S yeah, see, I'm let. That's what it is. All right, let's go from the app to the radio now. KV4S. KV4S. Okay. Now let me show you this. I also noticed that um, I set the DMR ID to what to the same thing I did in the USRP server. But I think you can change that to other IDs. And that may not be a big deal, but 
it may let you share the hotspot with multiple users. I don't think you could transmit at the same time, but it may be an option. So this is my my main DMR ID. The other one is a secondary one I built just or I had uh, requested so I could build bridges and different things uh, for testing. So this should show up the other ID. Eight. All right, the bridge ID comes across first, but uh, let's see if it changes when I key up KV4S. When I key up KV4S. Yeah, it changed the the ID on the radio screen too, so uh, that appears to work. Um, Seventy three KV4S.